चमक तुझ से पाते हैं सब पाने वाले चमक तुझ से पाते हैं सब पाने वाले चमक तुझ से पाते हैं सब पाने वाले मेरा وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين أما بعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الذين يبايعونك إنما يبايعون الله يد الله فوق أيديهم آمنت بالله صدق الله مولانا العظيم وصدق رسوله النبي الكريم ونحن على ذلك لمن الشاكرين والشاهدين والحمد لله رب العالمين ببركة إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما Each and every one of you joining Allah, Masundi ala Sayyidina wa Nabiyyina wa Shafiyyina wa Mawlana Muhammad wa Abdika wa Rasulika wa Nabiyyika wa Sundi ala Al-Mu'minina wa Al-Mu'minat wa Al-Muslimina wa Al-Muslimat. As-salatu wa s-salamu alayka ya Sayyidi ya Rasul Allah wa ala alika wa ashabika ya Sayyidi ya Habib Allah. والصلاة والسلام عليك يا سيدي يا رسول الله وعلى آلك وأصحابك يا سيدي يا خاتم النبيين بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم Honorable and respectable elders, brothers and sisters, lovable youngsters السلام عليكم ورحمة الله تعالى وبركاته وعليكم السلام ورحمة الله وبركاته Today is the last lecture in this Sira series which we have covered over the last seven months or so here at the Hadithi Ahzam mission in Blackburn. By the grace of Allah Almighty Jalla wa'ala and through the Karam Nawazi and Rahmat of Rasul Akram Sallallahu Ta'ala Alaihi Wasallam We are coming towards the latter stages of the noble and virtuous life of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Today we are going to In the previous six lectures which you will find on the YouTube channel Muhaddisi Azam Mission Blackburn. We have covered 58 years of the noble life of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And each and every one of us is fully aware that Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam who is Jana Jana lived on this earth, his physical existence on this earth was a total of 63 years. So we have around five years in the latter part of the noble life of the Prophet وسلم, still to cover and discuss. For those of you who are more Jews and present, find in front of you a six page document and revision notes on the seerah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi wa Wasallam and this is probably the most important six pages from the pages that we have given you and the many trees that we have chopped down over the last several months. Uh, this last tree that we sacrificed, 
for your benefit is probably the most important tree. So you need to make sure you keep these six pages very safe and secure. The complete seerah of the Prophet the key points from the seerah of the Prophet are covered in these six pages. What I'm going to do is give you five minutes to read over everything from page one till the bottom of page four. And inshallah, in five minutes, we'll start the first key discussion of today in the sixth year after Hijrah, the Treaty of Hudaybiyah, Sula Hudaybiyah, and Baypur Ridwan. Before we begin that discussion, just for a few minutes, five minutes or so, point by point, if you read through the revision notes in front of you, and refresh your knowledge, There is also the 13th of Ramadan al-Mubarak. Now without even realizing we are quickly passing through this noble and virtuous month. My advice would be that make the most of it. Before you know it, Ramadan will have ended. One of the best ways to spend the days and the nights of Ramadan is by seeking knowledge. Ibadat, no doubt, is the rust in its own place. But Ibadat only becomes credible and carries weight and value when there is knowledge behind that ibadah. Knowledge is the key and knowledge is light. Today people run away from knowledge and run towards ignorance. And I'm sorry to say that we are influenced by our cultural mindsets, our cultural ignorances. And we give more preference and ahmiya to our culture, be that the culture of the West or the Indian subcontinent. And we give more precedence and value to what people think of us than we do to Qur'an and Sunnah. The reality is this, that society can change, but Qur'an and Sunnah will never change. I think that's sufficient amount of time to get your heads around the first four pages. So, bottom of page four. And whatever's on your Whatever's in your notes will be on the board as well, inshallah. So we are now in the sixth year after Hijrah, the period of Al Madina to Munawwara. And in this sixth year, two key noteworthy events took place. The first, and probably the most important event that took place in this sixth year of the noble period of Madina al Munawwara, in the sixth year after Hijrah. Nabi Salaam, remember, was how old when he migrated? Fifty-three, good. 
Yes. So now this at six, this is now the fifty ninth year of the noble life of the Prophet Sallallahu Towards the end of last month's lecture, we looked at the battle of Handak. Remember? The battle of the trench. This event or the Vakya of Surah Hudaybiyya didn't lead to any form of fighting. As we can see in the month of Dhul Qa'dah, in the month of Dhul Qa'dah, the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Alaihi and around 1400 companions wore the ihram and left al madinatul Munawwara with the intention to perform the Umrah, the lesser pilgrimage. And we know that the distance from al madinatul Munawwara to al makkatul Mukarrama is just over 340 kilometers. Nowadays, via modern transport, Bakaida coaches and even our trains, Cholo train the Navijis, and but certainly over the last two, three, four decades, the main way of traveling from Al Makkatul Mukarrama to Al Madinatul Munawwara and vice versa has been by coach. Say, be that on the occasion of Hajj or Umrah. The Wawi Safar Kamak Pesh. At least four, five, six, seven, eight, uh, seven, eight hours, say. So, uh, Zedda to Zedda, eight hours with a few stops. This suffer that Nabi Islam to Islam did with a Jama'at of Sahaba Ikram totaling around 1400. This suffer Nabi Islam to Islam did either by way of walking or upon the camel or upon horseback. Yes. Bear this in mind. There were no trains or planes or automobiles 1400 years ago. So they're in the halat of Ihram, in the state of Ihram. And they make their way towards al makkatul Mukarrama with the intention to perform the Umrah. As they're making their way towards makkatul Mukarrama, They come to a place called Hudaybiyya. Hudaybiyya is around 20 to 25 kilometers outside of Makkah al Mukarrama. Some of you may have been, some of you may have not been. This Fakir, alhamdulillah, has been to Hudaybiyya a few times. When we go with the Sadat, we say Munawar Shah Sah Bukhari and his brother Ran, Sadat travel. They make it the mission and try their utmost to take the Hujjaj and the pilgrims to Hudaybiyah. And it's just outside the Hudud, Hudud of the Haram. Yes. So they get to this place called Hudaybiyah. And whilst Nabi Rasulat Islam and his Sahaba Karam are at Hudaybiyah, the Kuffar of the Quraysh, the Kuffar of Mecca, they become aware of the intentions of the Prophet So they sent a delegation of individuals to go and speak to the Prophet When this delegation came to the Prophet Sallallahu entered into negotiations with them. And essentially a treaty was negotiated. And we call this the Treaty of Hudaybiyah. Surah Hudaybiyah. 
some of the terms of the treaty, which you'll find on the bottom of page 4 as well, that fighting between the two groups, the believers, the Muslims, the Sahaba, and the Kufare, Quraysh, Kufare, Matka, would stop for a period of 10 years. First condition. Second condition, the Muslims shall return back this year without performing Umrah. So as I just mentioned, it's not a suffer, very difficult and hard conditions and circumstances. And now they're being told that they can't perform the Umrah. They can't enter into the vicinity of the Haram. Third condition of the treaty, term of the treaty, that they are permitted to stay in Makkah for a period of three days to perform Umrah the following year. So, Issa, Umrah Nahi, Aglisa. They come back, Sahaba, with the Prophet Wasallam. These were the conditions which were presented by the delegation that the Quraysh sent. Or Isitrike said, if any person was to leave Al Madinatul Munawwara, if any person who leaves from Makkah to Al Madinatul Munawwara, then irrespective of whether that person is a kafir or a believer, that person will be returned back to Makkah. But if a person was to leave Medina and come back to Makkah, then they would not be allowed to return. These particular terms were presented and Isitrikese, the treaty was written out. <coughs> Suhail ibn Amr, Suhail ibn Amr was the one who led this delegation. The agreement was drawn up. Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi accepted the terms. Some of the Sahaba, including Sayyidina Umar Farooq radiyallahu ta'ala anhu, felt that the terms were unfair and they did not favor the believers. But Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi knew what the Sahaba, what Sayyidina Umar did not know. And Allah Almighty Jalla wa'ala Reveal the verse, the opening verse of Surah Al-Fatih. فَإِنَّا فَتَحْنَا لَكَ فَتْحًا مُّبِينَ That undoubtedly we have granted you a clear victory. Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi could see through his prophetic knowledge and wisdom, his ilm al that which the Sahaba couldn't see. Sahaba just saw the external aspects and the uh, terms of the treaty and they felt that these terms were unfair on the believers. But the terms were written out and the terms were written by who? Sayyidina Ali Murtaza radiallahu ta'ala. Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi gave instruction to Sayyidina Ali Murtaza Ali, you are to write out the conditions of the truce and the conditions of the treaty which were mutually agreed upon. Sayyidina Ali Murtaza radiallahu ta'ala who was ordered by Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi first to write Bismillah ar-Rahman rahim to which Suhail ibn Amr objected and he said that we don't know what this Rahman is. So you should instruct him to write Bismika Allahumma a practice which is accepted by you and me. Sahaba Ikram getting even more enraged. Nabi Salatu Islam knew that which they did not know. Nabi Salatu Islam instructed Sayyidina Ali Murtaza to write Bismika Allahumma after this then, Sayyidina Ali Murtaza wrote that these are the conditions of a truce agreed upon by the Quraysh and Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the Messenger of Allah. 
Again, Suhail angrily replied and said, Oath be upon Allah. Allah ki tamanne sa. Lekin wo shirk. They would do barabri with Allah Almighty. They would associate partners with Allah. He said, Oath be upon Allah. If we had accepted you to be the Prophet of Allah, neither would we have prohibited you to visit the Kaaba, nor would we have fought against you. Asad rola ye ye na. That we don't accept you to be the Prophet of Allah. Yes. So rather than writing the Prophet of Allah, you should write Muhammad, the son of Abdullah. Again, when Suhail ibn Ahmad made this objection, Sahaba Ikram became even more angry. Nabi Islam instructs Sayyidina Ali Murtaza that oh, Ali erase Muhammadur Rasulullah and write Muhammad the son of Abdullah, Muhammad ibn Abdullah. Dazala, which Muslim here could be more obedient to the Messenger of Allah وسلم, than Sayyidina Ali Murtaza? He was the one who slept in the bed of the Prophet وسلم, on the occasion of Hijrah. He is the one who married the blessed daughter of the Prophet Sallallahu say the Fatima to Zahra. He is the father of Imam Hassan ibn Mujtaba and Sayyid al-Shuhada, Imam Ali Maqam, Imam Hussein ibn Ali, radiyallahu ta'ala anhumah. Yes, and the fadail and excellences of Sayyidina Ali ibn Mujtaba, we are all aware of the shahadat isi mahine mein Ramadan al-Mubarak mein. So who could be more obedient to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi than Sayyidina Ali ibn Mujtaba? But out of love, which only a true lover can reach, a true ashik like Sayyidina Ali Murtaza can reach, out of love, Sayyidina Ali Murtaza, he says, Ya Rasulullah, Ya Habib Allah, I shall never erase your name. I shall never erase your name. Yes. And that's when the Prophet Sallallahu asked Sayyidina Ali Murtaza, that show me where you've written my name. And at that point, Nabi Islam himself erased the word Rasulullah and wrote huh? Muhammad ibn Abdullah. Is to Yeri Sabitona, we also established from this that Nabi Islam has no doubt the ability to read and write. Somebody might object. That why didn't Nabi Islam write the terms of the conditions or terms of the treaty, conditions of the treaty himself? Simple answer, Nabi Salaatul Islam wanted to give this sharaf and honor to Sayyidina Ali Murtaza. And then from this we learn that Sayyidina Ali Murtaza was not willing to rub out Muhammad Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Alaihi Wasallam. It's which Quiraz has seen that, Sabak seen that. But the fact that Nabi Salaatul Islam took a hold of the treaty, removed Rasulullah, add Muhammad bin Abdullah, this in its, in its, in its, in its essence, is a dalil, is a proof and evidence that Nabi Islam is able to read about. That he is ummi, he is not able to read and write. But this uh, does not conform with the aqidah of the Ahli Sunnah wal Jama'at, which is that Allah Almighty Jalla wa'ala has given all of the Anbiya and Mursaleen intellect. Yes. Fitana, intellect, and a part of intellect. And the purpose of the prophets is what? To guide the people. So how is the prophet of Allah, any of them, able to guide if they're not able to read and write? And common sense and logic. Baqaida does not allow us to accept this. So categorically let it be known that all of the prophets were able to read and write. Yes. And when we say Nabi Salaatu Islam is Ummi, Iska Murad or Mana Yeh is that Bator is Zahir. On the apparent, Nabi Salaatu Islam has no teacher, has no Ustad. For in reality, Allah is his teacher. Ar Rahman, Allah al Quran, Khalaq al Insa. Bad Samir. So the pact, the agreement was signed and sealed. And some of the Sahaba were not happy and content with this. At the same time, Nabi Rasulullah 
sent Sayyiduna Uthman Ghani radiyallahu ta'ala anhu, who was in the halat of Ihram, to Makkah to Mukarram. And when Sayyid, and why did they send Sayyidina Uthman? Because Sayyidina Uthman was a notable from amongst the Quraysh, respected and honored by the Quraysh. Or Baqaida, when Sayyidina Uthman arrives at the Ka'bah to Sharifa, the Quraysh said to Sayyidina Uthman that, O oh, Uthman, you are one of us. We will give you the opportunity to do tawaf of the Kaaba and do sa'id between Safa and uh, Safa and Marwa. So they gave this opportunity, this mocha to Sayyidina Uthman Ghani. To which Sayyidina Uthman replies, Imam Bayhaqi does knuckle of these alfaz, that Kuntu la atufu bihi hatta yatufa bihi Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa That how can I perform a tawaf of the Kaaba? If the Messenger of Allah is not allowed to perform a tawaf. Meaning, I will not perform tawaf hatta yatufa bihi Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa I will not perform tawaf until the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam himself performs tawaf. Faraja'a ila Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and then he returns to Sayyiduna Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. But rumors began to circulate. That Uthman Ghani has been assassinated and he has been killed by the <coughs> Kuffar e Makkah. These rumors reached the Prophet. Yes. Or Facebook the door Facebook na door tanisida. Social media ka door tanisida. But the news reached 20 kilometers, 25 kilometers. Kitna dura from here. Probably from here to Darwin, maybe. Is to be cut? Further, and that's Allah. When I say Tibet here, where is that here? From the Baltimore. Oh, true. The Baltimore suffer. Nobody knows what's happening in Baltimore. Yes. And nor do the people of Baltimore know what's happening here in Blackman. Just like you don't give them some sort of khabar, at kal the smartphone ke zariye se, internet ke zariye se. So here, key point. News reaches the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and the Sahaba. Rumors. Of the news of rumors reached the Prophet ﷺ and Sahaba that Sayyid Uthman has been assassinated. Yes. So then what happens? Then Baytul Ridwan, I don't know if you can see that, huh? but it's there. Baytul Ridwan takes place. What's Baytul Ridwan? This is the pledge, the allegiance between the Prophet ﷺ and the Sahaba. Yes. And Allah Almighty Jalla wa'ala mentions this allegiance in the Quran. Now, I know it's difficult for you. They can difficult for you, you're all fasting and mashallah, there's one or two of you, well done. And it's a shame we're gonna lose you at six. But there's one or two of you, mashallah, making them notes. And Allah bless you. But remember, what you've got in front of you is just a, uh, an overview. Uh, and they are revision notes. The finer details, you do need to make some effort to write it down. Yes? So the finer details are what? And who was sent by the Prophet Sallallahu to Makkah Sharif? Sayyidina Uthman Ghani. Yes? Who was told to write down the terms of the agreement and the treaty? Sayyidina Ali Murtada. So write these things down, yes? Allah Almighty Jalla wa'ala mentions this pledge and this allegiance this oath that the companions took upon the hands of the Prophet ﷺ, under the tree of Ridwan. So why is it called Bayt Ridwan? Because the tree was actually called Ridwan. It called Ridwan Kamana, contentment. Yes. Allah Almighty mentions this in the Quran, Surah Al Fat. Which, if I'm not mistaken, is Surah number 58, uh, Balkan 48. The verse that I recited at the beginning. Inna al-ladina yubayyounaka inna ma yubayyoun Allah yadullahi fawqa aydihim. It's ka tarjama that those who swore an allegiance to you, Ya Rasulullah, in reality they swore an allegiance to Allah Almighty. 
Yadullahi fawka aydihim. The hand of Allah is above their hands. Don't take it literally. Yes. Metaphorically speaking. That the hand of Allah is above their hands. Yes. And then the Quran speaks about those companions. How many in total? 1400. Allah speaks about those companions who make this pledge. Baytu Ridwan. The Laqad Rabbi Allah who are an ill mu'minina. An ill mu'minina. If you buy your own a katahta shajarati. So from the Quran, we understand that it was under a tree. The tree of Ridwan. Allah Almighty says, Surely Allah was pleased with the believers when they swore the allegiance to you, Ya Rasulullah, Tahta Shajari under the tree. فَعَلِمَ مَا فِي قُلُوبِهِمْ فَعَنزَلَ السَّكِينَةَ عَلَيْهِمْ فَعَثَابَهُمْ فَتْحًا قَرِيبٌ Further reassurance from Allah Almighty Jalla Ba'ala. But Allah is happy, Allah is pleased with those believers who pledged their allegiance and gave their oath to the Prophet Sallallahu And what was the allegiance? That if the rumors prove to be true that our companion Uthman has been martyred, then we will not hesitate, we will wage war against the Quraysh. If the rumors were to be true. One by one, Nabi Islam takes oath from the Sahaba. One by one. 1200 Sahaba Ikram. Abu Qadr, 1400. 1400 Sahaba Ikram. One by one they come and they place their hands in the hands of Rasulullah. Allah Almighty is bearing witness to this in the Quran. And Allah Almighty says that we know what is in their hearts. فَعَلِمَ مَا فِي قُلُوبِهِمْ We know what is in their hearts. فَأَنزَلَ السَّكِينَةَ And we send down a sakina, a peace and tranquility upon them. And we will reward them. فَأَثَابَهُمْ We will reward them. فَتْحًا قَرِيبٌ With a near victory. With a near victory. So Sahaba Ikram, one by one, place their hands in the hands of Rasul Akram sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam. And when the Prophet ﷺ gets to the last Sahabi, once the last Sahabi places his hand in the hand of the Prophet ﷺ, after that Nabi ﷺ, without Tashbi wa Tamthil, without making my hand resemble his pure hands, Nabi ﷺ take their right hand and they said, this hand represents the hand of Uthman. This hand represents the hand of Uthman and I place the hand of Uthman in my hand. So the idea is how many kilometers away from Akashri? 20, 25, Kamopesh, yes? Rumors began to circulate from Mecca, rumors starting from Mecca, yes? That Uthman has been assassinated. No social media, no Facebook, no internet, nothing. Yes, from here to Bolton and Dazalao. And what does Nabi Islam say? Giving clear indication, knowing that Sayyid Uthman is alive. Nabi Islam says that this hand, right hand of Nabi Islam, this hand represents the hand of Uthman. And I place the hand of Uthman in my hand. Meaning what? Nabi Islam knew and had this knowledge that Sayyidina Uthman Ghani was still alive. Very bad something. Allah. But there was a wisdom behind this. Yes. There were a lot of hypocrites and munafiks in and around. Medina Sharif and amongst the Sahaba even. So to affirm their loyalty to the Prophet to pledge their allegiance to the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Bayt Ridwan takes place. And from this we also deduce the permissibility of taking oath and making allegiance to a Shaykh. Shaykh Tariqat, Shaykh Shariyat, and having a teacher, having a guide, a murshid, a peer, a hati. Yes. From this we deduce this uh, permissibility as well. We look at it now. We say, Piri Muridi can do it. It's a dalil. So this is the dalil. So next time somebody asks you, Brother, you've got a peer. Where is it mentioned in the Sharia that you can have a guy? And where is the concept of baya and bad mentioned in the Quran? These are the references. Yes. A few of the details regarding Hudaybiyah. A famous miracle of the Prophet took place at Hudaybiyah. 
Sahabai Kram who had traveled for several days from Medina Sharif to Makkah Sharif, when they get to Hudaybiyah, they've run out of water. Very little water is available. Yes. Or Baqaida, they don't have any water to make ablution with, and they don't have any water to drink, Sahaba, and they don't have any water to give to the animals. So Sahaba Ikram come to the Prophet Sallallahu Ta'ala Wasallam and they say, Ya Rasulullah, Ya Habibullah, huh? we don't have much water left to drink and to perform ablution with. At that point, Nabi Islam said that bring whatever water you have in a bowl. So Sahaba Ikram, huh? they brought the water huh, that they had left in a bowl to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And when Nabi Islam sees this and has witnesses this water in the bowl, Nabi Islam, Bilat Tashbi wa Tamthil again, might not resembling my fingers to his. Nabi Islam places his blessed fingers inside the bowl. And from them, fingers, five in total, water begins to flow. Water begins to flow. And through that water, the Sahaba were able to quench their thirst, perform ablution, and give to the animals as well. Yes, so this is one mu'jizah that took place. Similarly, there was a well close by to Hudaybiyah. Again, if you've been, you will know. Yes, And Nabi Islam, Islam because the well, uh, no water could be taken from it. Nabi Islam, Islam took their blessed saliva, placed it inside that water and as soon as he placed his blessed saliva inside the water the water began to gush up to the top of the well and that water was more sweeter than zamzam or ye bhi aqeedah hai alama yusuf bin ismail and nabhani and many other ulama ikram they mention and have this discussion that what water what water is more afdal Yes. Zamzam, Zamzam, the Zamzam water, which is water from Jannah, right? Which we have through the blessings of Sayyidina Ismail al Islam and his mother Sayyidina Bibi, Hajra Salamul Alika. So they said, is the Zamzam water more after and greater, or is that water that came from the blessed fingers of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam greater? And our ulama right that the water which gushed from the blessed fingers of Rasulullah this water is more afdal and ala than zamzam water. Yes. Anything that has a nisbat with Nabi Islam becomes afdal and ala. Anything that has a connection with the Prophet Wasallam becomes more excellent and virtuous. But some, you know, and this is what the non-Muslims witnessed as well. There was an individual by the name of Urwa ibn Mas'ud al thaqafi Urwa was his name. U-R-W-A, Urwa. He was part of this delegation that was sent to the Prophet Wasallam and the companions. And he witnesses something which Qadi Iyad rahmatullahi mentions here in his Ashifa bi ta'rifi hukuk al-Mustafa sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam under the section regarding ta'zeem and honor and reverence for the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Yes? They mentioned that uh, on the occasion of Hudaybiyah, Sulah Hudaybiyah, Urwa ibn Mas'ud al thaqafi he was sent by the mushrikeen. He was Bukhari Sharif, he was sent by Bukhari Sharif. And he was sent by the Mushrikeen in Makkah to negotiate with the Prophet He observes and witnesses many unique things. When he comes back to the Quraysh, he begins to do bayan of what he saw and what he observed. وَرَآ مِن تَعْزِيمِ أَصْحَابِهِ لَهُ مَا رَآ وَأَنَّهُ لَا يَتَوَدَّعَ إِلَّا بْتَدَرُوا uh, and then he begins to describe what, what he observed. He goes, that I saw a great level of reverence and respect from his companions, which I never saw from any other companions. So much so that when the Prophet was making, Yani Muhammad Rasulullah, when he was making ablution, 
His companions would fight with one another. They would compete with one another to take that water which was flowing from his jismi adhar and they would take that water and they would wipe it upon their faces. He goes, I saw uh, some unique things whilst I was in their company and presence. Like this, he says, that when the Prophet ﷺ would cough, they would gather that phlegm uh, and the extracts of that cough. Companions, they would gather the phlegm and the extracts of that cough and they would begin to wipe it upon their faces. It was a or gharib silsila. And then he comes to the conclusion, he says to the mushrikeen in Makkah, uh, that umzur, uh, umzur, uh, uh, Bakayda he says that I have been, I have been Raja ila Qurayshin. He returns to the Quraysh and he says, Qala, Ya Mahshara Qurayshin, Inni jittu qisra fi mulkihi, wa qaysara fi mulkihi, wa najashihi fi mulkihi. Yes. That I've been to Qaysar and Qisra and Najashi, and I've seen how their companions treat their kings. I've seen how their followers are today. Badshahs and their kings. He goes, Wallahi ma ra'aytu malikan fi qawmin qattu mithla Muhammadin fi ashabihi. He goes, I have never seen a group of companions and individuals and followers honor an individual more than the companions of Muhammad honored the Prophet Muhammad Who is saying this? A non-Muslim. Urwa ibn Mas'ud al thaqafi Yes. And he goes, you won't be able to defeat them. He's saying this to the Quraysh. He goes, you won't be able to defeat them. Because in their heart is mahabbat ya Rasul. In their heart is ta'zeem, honor and reverence for the messenger of Allah sallallahu And when you have these two key ingredients in your heart, there is no force on this earth that can overcome you. Hubbun nabi and ta'zimun nabi sallallahu ta'ala because love and reverence love and honor for the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa so non-muslims witness the greatness of the companions for the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa al batta uh, they mention here a power of Abu Sufyan who after Abu Jahl was the staunchest enemy of Islam until he accepted Islam he says, "Ma ra'aytu min al-nasi ahadan yuhibbu ahadan ka hubbi ashabi Muhammadin Muhammadan." Sallallahu alaihi wasallam. He goes, "That I have not seen a group of individuals love a person more than the companions of Muhammad Rasulullah Sallallahu alaihi wasallam love the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu alaihi wasallam." So, ek taraf ta'zim, ek taraf mahabbat. Yes, this is what the Sahaba had, and this is why the Sahaba are Khairun Nas, the best of people. Ba'dal Anbiya. Khairun Nas, Ba'dal Anbiya. They're the best of people after the Prophets. Who? The noble companions of Rasulullah. Yes. So, this is the main and the key event that takes place in the sixth year after Hijrah. Okay. Sulah so when the agreement for a truce was signed and complete, Nabi Rasulullah ordered the Sahaba and said that come perform your qurbani, shave your heads, remove your ihram. But because the companions were full of anger and bewilderment, they would not budge, they would not move from their places. Yes, They had this reverence for him no doubt, but they could not accept the terms of the treaty and the terms of the uh, truce. So the Prophet ﷺ mentioned this to say the Umm Salama, Umm al Mu'mineen, that the companions were still in amazement and they were not willing to move and complete the actions which were desired by the Prophet. ﷺ. At that point, say the Umm Salama gives her opinion and she says that I think you shouldn't say anything to anyone, rather, you should perform your own qurbani. You should shave your head and you should let them be. Nabi Salatu Wasalam took this advice on board. Nabi Salatu Wasalam went out. He sacrificed his camel, performed the qurbani, shaved uh, the blessed 
Ra'as Mubarak or got it shaved and Baqaida removed this uh, ihram and they were removed from the state of ihram. When the Sahaba saw Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi doing this, without hesitation they began to also offer the Qurbani. Without hesitation they also began to shave their heads and without hesitation they also uh, were removed from the state of ihram. Okay? And Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi with his companions set out to return back to Medina to Okay. Also in the sixth year after Hijrah, Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi writes letters to the kings of different empires of that time, different rulers, different emperors, inviting them to Islam. Yes. And in total, six different kings received letters which uh, had the seal of the Prophet Sallallahu upon them. And these letters were delivered by six different Sahaba Ikram. Yes. So write it down. Six letters bearing the seal of the Prophet Sallallahu with six Sahaba Ikram delivered to six different kings on one particular day. Yes. <coughs> Sayyidina Dihya Qalbi was sent to the court of Hirakal, who was the emperor of Rome. Dihya Qalbi was his name. Sayyidina Abdullah bin Huzaifa was sent to the court of Khusro. Uh, the title of the emperor of Khusro was Parvez, yes, the king of Persia. Sayyidina Hatib was sent to the court of Makukis, yani the Aziz of Egypt. Sayyidina Amr bin Umayya was sent to Najashi, the king of Abyssinia. Sayyidina Sunayt bin Umar was sent to the king of Yamama. Yes. And Sayyidina Shuja bin Wahab was sent to the governor of Ghisan. Six Sahaba with six letters sent to six different kings, inviting them to Islam. Some accepted these letters, others were disrespectful, like the king of Persia, uh, the Parvez. Uh, he goes that, why did Muhammad put his name before my name? Yes. And he tore up the letter into shreds and he threw the letter on the floor. And then uh, Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi said, uh, he informed the Sahaba, Hundreds of miles away. Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Mazzaka kitabi, Mazzaka Allahu malakuhu. That he had torn my letter into shreds, Allah will now tear his kingdom into shreds. And that proved to be exactly the case. That the king of Parvez, I mean the king of Persia, Parvez, he was killed by his own son. The one who tore up the letter, he was kill, killed by his own son. Uh, his son cut up his stomach, yes, whilst he was asleep. And this began the end of his kingdom and his, his reign. And eventually, uh, the whole Persian Empire was defeated during the Khilafat of Sayyidina Amir al Mu'mini, Umar al Farooq. We know the great love Najashi had for the Messenger of Allah. And then they mention here the conduct of the other kings as well. Yes. So these were the two main uh, events that took place in the sixth year after Hijrah. Sulah Hudaybiyah and Bayt al Ridwan and the six letters sent with six companions to six different kings inviting <coughs> them to Islam. Do we understand? <laughs> So what time is Asr? 8 o'clock. Oh, Vibara time. Material, ya Rosa, ya. Don't worry, I've only got a few discussions left. Yes? Seventh year after Hijrah. And the key event that took place in the seventh year after Hijrah is the Battle of Khaybar. The Battle of Khaybar. 
Khaybar around 320 kilometers from Al Madinah to Munawwara. And when the Jews of Medina were expelled from Medina, many of them fled to Khaybar, a stronghold of the Yahud, the Jews. And they were known for being rich and competitive in battle. And due to this prowess in battle, yes, the Jews aligned themselves with the Kuffar Makkah, Kuffar Quraysh, and they amassed an army of 20,000 soldiers. This is now double the size of the army of the Mushrikeen in Makkah at the Battle of Handak. Remember? Abu Sufyan, with all of the different provinces of Arabia, came together, united themselves, and they amassed an army of 10,000, and they marched upon Medina Sharif, and that's when the Prophet Sallallahu dug the trench. We did all of this last month, yes? But now this is double the size. When did this battle take place? Write it down. The battle took place in the month of Muharram al-Haram. Yes? So in the seventh year after Hijrah, in the month of Muharram. So this is what? Dhul Ka'da is the 11th month. Dhul Hijjah is the 12th month. So in the 11th month they went to Hudaybiyah. And two months later now, the Battle of Khaybar takes place. al -Bata, on average, if you look at all of the battles, on average, during this period in Medina al Munawwara, a battle took place, be that a Ghazwa or a Sariya, and I told you the difference between the two, two months ago. A battle took place every one and a half months, on average. Yani the Sahaba occupied most of their time defending the honor of Islam and the honor and the namus of Rasul Akram sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Yes, Sahaba didn't say, "Ya Rasulullah, Tawriji Muhalat, little bit of rest. We've just come back from one battle. One battle finished, another battle started." Takriban, on average, one and a half month between every battle, uh, between the first battle. In the second year after Hijrah, the Battle of Badr, so to speak, until the very last battle, just before the Prophet ﷺ left this dunya, yani, uh, the Battle of uh, Jayshi Osama, which we've come to towards the end. So Sahaba didn't say, Ya Rasulullah, Thawriji, Mohlat, Thawriji, rest. We've got families, we've got businesses, we've got... Ajkal just a lok excuse banane. When it comes to the honor of Islam, and when it comes to the honor of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, Rasul, now Musa is silent. Sahaba Ikram did not rest for even a lampa, a moment. Yes. Today we take the easy option. Yes. So the Battle of Khaybar, the fourth biggest battle to take place, Badr Sharif, or the Battle of Badr, the Battle of Uhud, the Battle of Handak, and the fourth biggest battle to take place during. Uh, the Prophet Sallallahu life cast or in the period of Al-Madinah to Munawwara is the Battle of Khaybar. Yes, the Battle of Khaybar. Okay. It was at this battle that Sayyiduna Ali Murtaza radiallahu ta'ala who forged his legacy. Yes, without going into too much detail regarding the battle. Nabi Salatu Islam said, the night before the battle, لَأُعْتِيَنَّ الرَّايَةَ غَدًا رَجُلًا يَفْتَقُ اللَّهُ عَلَى يَدَيْهِ The tomorrow I will give the flag of Islam to that individual whom Allah shall make victorious. يُحِبُّ الله يحب الله ورسوله ويحبه الله ورسوله 
and he is that individual who Allah and his Rasul love and he loves Allah and his Rasul. Yes. Then he loves Allah and his Rasul. And Allah and his Rasul love him. And the narrator of the hadith here, Bukhari Sharif, he says that فبات الناس يدوكون ليلتهم أيهم يطاها that the companions, the Sahaba, 1600 of them in number, all of them spent the entire night anxiously waiting to see who this person was that the Prophet ﷺ was going to give the flag of Islam to. And who Allah is Rasul love, and he loves Allah is Rasul. al Batta says, Umar Farooq says that on this day, I yearn for the flag of Islam to be given to me. And he goes, never in my life did I wish to command a battalion as much as I wish to command a battalion on that day. Yes. And other Sahaba Ikram had similar desire. The following morning, the morning of the battle, <coughs> Nabi Salatu Islam gathered the Sahaba and Nabi Salatu Islam asked them that, Aina Ali, where is Ali? Sahaba, they realized straight away that the one who Nabi Salatu Islam was referring to yesterday was none other than Sayyidina Ali Murtaza. Babul Ilm. Yes. Mulai Kainat, Mushkil Kusha, Shere Huda, Sayyidina Ali Murtaza. Sahaba Ikram said, Ya Rasulullah Sayyidina Ali has got an ailment in his eye. He's got an ailment in his eye. Nabi Salatu Islam said, Go, bring Ali to me. So soon Sahaba go and they arrive at the tent of Sayyidina Ali Murtaza and they give Sayyidina Ali the instruction that Nabi Salatu Islam command that Nabi Salatu Islam is calling him. Sayyidina Ali Murtaza arrives in the court in the presence of the Prophet Wasallam. and what does Nabi Salatu Islam do? Nabi Salatu Islam takes his blessed saliva and he places it upon the eye of Sayyidina Ali Murtaza. Sayyidina Ali Murtaza. Yes. And this pain and this aching that he had, it was as though he had never endured it before. Yes. Then the Prophet ﷺ gave the flag of Islam to Sayyidina Ali Murtaza. And what was this flag? A black sheet prepared by Sayyidina Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha. Yes. Sayyidina Ali Murtaza radiallahu ta'ala anhu was given instructions by the Prophet ﷺ that, Oh Ali! Go to the Jews peacefully and invite them towards Islam. Tell them that after accepting it, certain rights of Allah become compulsory upon them. By Allah, even if one person accepts Islam due to your propagation, it's excellent and far greater for you than the accumulation of red camels. And you always give them a chance. Always give them a chance. We're very quick to write off our own, never mind the non-Muslims. Huh? We're very quick to write off our own, never mind the non-Muslims. Okay. Sayyidina Ali Murtaza accepts these instructions from the Prophet Sallallahu and he makes his way towards the fort of Qamus. Yes. And he invited the Jews towards Islam. And what did they do? They responded by firing arrows at him and throwing stones at him. And the leader of the Jews was an individual by the name of Murahab. Yes, Murahab. A name worth noting. Not because of his uh, greatness or anything. But because it was this individual who was responsible for contributing towards Sayyidina Ali Murtaza forging his legacy. So, Murahab comes forward. And he begins to address Sayyidina Ali Murtaza. Qad alimat khaybaru anni murahab. Shaki salahi batalul murahab. He goes, Khaybar knows very well that I am murahab. Arrogantly he says this. Yes. And it's mentioned that murahab had the strength of 20 men. Feared amongst the Jews, uh, he was known for his 
Shujaat, so to speak, is great bravery. Yes. Obviously, he was crossing path with the greatest of the great. Yes. Known for his bravery and Shujaat, no doubt. So Murahab says this that Khaybar knows very well I am Murahab. I am heavily armored, very brave and experienced. Sayyidina Ali Murtaza replied, Anan Ladi Sammatni Ummi Haida. Kalaitha Ghayatin O Ghabatin Karihil Manzara. Yes. That I am the very person given the title Haider. Haider Kamana Lion. From my mother, Fatima binti Asad. And I am more fearful than a wild lion. So you know, Ali replies like this. Murahab becomes anxious and obnoxiously steps in the direction of Sayyidina Ali Murtaza. Sayyidina Ali managed to block his swing and thereafter swung at Murahab's head with his sword, Zulfiqar. Yes. And this sword was given to him, the two-edged sword was given to him by the messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And with this sword, Zulfiqar, Sayyidina Ali Murtaza sliced through the head of Murahab until he reached his teeth. Yes. And with this strike, Murahab fell to the ground, fell to his death. Yes. And seeing the corpse of Murahab reach the ground, the entire Jewish army Shock, but they want not What did they do? They ambushed Sayyidina Ali Murtaza They rushed to attack Sayyidina Ali. Sayyidina Ali, Baqaida, uh, he with his sword Zulfiqar began to defend himself. And then Sayyidina Ali Murtaza came near the goal and uh, came near the gate of the famous fort and uprooted that door that gate of the famous fort of Kamus and used that door as a shield <coughs> and it's mentioned that this door was so heavy that it would have taken 40 men to have lifted that door but Allah gave this strength to Sayyidina Ali Murtaza. Allah gave this strength to Sayyidina Ali Murtaza. And eventually, bravely, Sayyidina Ali Murtaza and those companions who were a part of his battalion, they were able to capture the fort of Kamus and ultimately confirming the prophetic prediction of the Prophet Sallallahu that the night before the battle, Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said what? I shall give this flag to the person who shall conquer Khaybar. And who conquered Khaybar? Sayyidina Ali Murtaza. And how old is now Sayyidina Ali? Let's work this out together. So how old was Sayyidina Ali when he accepted Islam? The first child to accept Islam. G. Anyone? I mentioned this before. Child? How old are you? Eight. How old are you? Ten. Same age as Ibrahim, is it? Muhammad. Muhammad. Same age as Muhammad. Sayyidina Ali was ten. How old was he? Ten when he accepted Islam. How old was the Prophet when they announced the Nabuwa Dari Yes. Forty. So he was thirty years the junior of the Prophet. How old is the Prophet now? Fifty. Nine. So 59 take away 30. 29. So Sayyidina Ali was 29 years old. Write it down. Sayyidina Ali was 29 years old. Yes, I'm 30 myself. And that's Allah. Yes. So who's 29 or 100 here? Everyone's going to put their hand up, right? <laughs> 29 years old. Sayyidina Ali Murtaza, Shere Huda, Mushkil Kusha, Karram Allah Ta'ala Wajibul Kareem, the fourth caliph of Islam, the husband of Sayyidina Fatima Tuzahra, the father of Imam Hassan and Imam Hussein, Hassanin Karimain, 
radiyallahu ta'ala anhuma. Yes. Allah. Age is just a number. Age is just a number. 93 Jews were killed in this battle. 15 Sahaba Muslims attained the Maqam of Shahada. Write it down. 93 Jews were killed in this battle of Khaybar and 15 Sahaba attained Shahada. And Sayyidina Ali Murtaza became known by the unique title Conqueror of Khaybar, Fatih Khaybar. great military prowess demonstrated by Sayyidina Ali Murtaza. Okay. A few days after the battle, Nabi Salatu Islam was poisoned. Yes, they were invited for and it was Nabi Salatu Islam blessed Ada that after the battle whether they were victorious or whether they were not victorious they would remain in that area, in that land, in that place for several days, sometimes even weeks, yes? So the people, if they needed to know about Islam, those who came towards Islam, that this Islam would educate them. But uh, there was the wife of the Jew, Salam bin Mushka, who invited the Prophet Sallallahu for a meal and the meat she had poisoned, she had poisoned, demonstrating the malice that the Jews possessed. Nabi Salatu Islam took part in this feast, this meal, and ate a morsel. The meat was then ordered by Allah to speak. The meat was then ordered by Allah to speak. Yes? Or Baqaida. The meat, Nabi Salatu Islam stopped eating it. But there was a Sahabi by the name of Sayyiduna Bashir bin Bara. He had eaten too much and he also became a Shaheed as well. The Prophet Sallallahu endured the hardships and the difficulties of the poison from that one morsel for the remainder of his noble and blessed life. Yes. After this incident, the Jews were questioned regarding the poisoning. And they responded by saying that we deliberately poisoned your food in order to decide whether you are a true prophet or an imposter. If we had killed you, we would have come to this conclusion that you are an imposter. If you weren't killed, then we, we would have come to this conclusion that you are a true prophet. Yes? Nabi Salatu Salam had never avenged anything done against him personally. But this woman who poisoned the meat, Zainab was her name. Yes? She was killed in Qasas for the Shahadat of Sayyidina Bashir bin Barah. Do you understand? Okay. After the battle of Khaybar and this incident that took place, Sayyidina Ja'far al-Tayyar returns to al madinah al Murawa, returns from Habsha to Medina. And the Prophet sallallahu ta'ala wasallam said, Ma adri bi ayyihima ana afrahu bi khudumi Ja'farin aw bi fathi Khaybara. Nabi Salaatu Salaam said, I am not sure what makes me more happy the return of Ja'far or the victory that Allah gave us at Khaybar. Yes. So expressing happiness at the arrival of someone, this is the sunnah of the Prophet And this is the whole purpose of Bilal Sharif, right? What do we do every Rabbi Lawal Sharif? We express happiness. We don't look very happy at the moment. Smile people, don't worry, we're coming to the end of the journey. Yes, unkismat ya nasib. Something in the pipeline for September, but we'll see. Uh, but Baqaida Nabi Salatu Islam said, I don't know what makes me more happier. The return of Ja'far or the victory at Khaybar. And the fact that he mentions the return of Ja'far first, 
This is indication that Nabi Islam was more happier on the brother, elder brother of Sayyidina Ali returning from Habsha to Medina to Munawwara. Yes. So if expressing happiness on the arrival of Ja'far is, is a sunnah, and Nabi Islam was happy upon his arrival in Medina, then imagine the reward for expressing happiness upon the arrival of the chosen one, Rasulullah into the dunya. Come every year we express our happiness and our joy. What's the verse of the Quran? قُلْ بِفَضُ لِلَّهِ وَبِرَحْمَتِهِ وَبِذَلِكَ فَلْيَفْرَهُ فَلْيَفْرَهُ Same word here. فَلْيَفْرَهُ خَيْرٌ فَلْيَفْرَهُ هُوَ خَيْرٌ مِمَّا يَجْمَعُونَ Yes. Surah Yunus, Surah number 10, verse 62. Barat. Sayyidina Jafar Tayyar returns and he is uh, Sahibul Hijratain, uh, the one who was involved in the two Hijras. Remember, we did this a few months ago. Okay. Isi Trike say, in the seventh year after Hijrah, the Prophet وسلم, and the Sahaba performed the Umratul Qadha. Remember, one of the terms of the treaty was what? That the Sahaba and the Prophet وسلم, would return the following year for three days. days and they would be allowed to perform the Umrah. They performed this Umrah <coughs> in the month of Dhul Qa'dah, one year exactly in the seventh year after Hijrah. Yes. This time, 2,000 Sahaba Ikram, only 100 horses between them, camels, and they took their Qurbaniyas as well. Chika. Or Baqaida, Mushrikeen in Makkah, Kufar in Makkah, they fled to the mountains. They fled to the mountains and they were witnessing all of this from the mountains. So the Prophet ﷺ wanted to demonstrate uh, the, what's the word? What's the, they were, they wanted to demonstrate the courage. Uh, no, I'm looking for a different word. Because they thought, Mushrikeen in Makkah thought that the Sahaba would be fatigued, tired from the journey. So Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi said to the Sahaba that for the first three rounds around the Kaaba we should do Ramal. And what's Ramal? Sticking for men, sticking your chest out, putting your shoulders back and moving, strutting from side to side, briskly walking and doing Tawaf for the first three circuits around the Kaaba. To show to them that we are not weak, we are not fatigued, we are not tired, Allah has given us this strength. And that uh, how come from the Prophet ﷺ has remained until today and inshallah will remain up until the day of judgment. Now whenever you and me go and perform Umrah or do the Tawaf in the Hajj, within the Hajj, yes, not a general Tawaf, then we are also expected to do the Ramal as well in Halat Ihram. Yes. This is the ikhtiyar that Allah Almighty has given to the Prophet ﷺ. Okay. Also, Nabi Islam marries Umm al-Mu'mineen say that Maymuna radiyallahu ta'ala anha during this journey of Umrah al qadha Yes? Who was Sayyidah Maymuna? Write this down. Sayyidah Maymuna was the sister of Umm Fazal. And Umm Fazal was the wife of Sayyidina Abbas, yani the uncle of the Prophet So Sayyidah Maymuna is the sister of Umm Fazal, F-A-Z-L. And Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam married, or should I say the other way around, Sayyidina Mamuna was honored to become the noble wife and the mother of the believers at a place called Sarif. And incidentally, 44 years after this incident, 44 years after this incident, Sayyidina Mamuna leaves this dunya and she's also buried at this place called Sarif. Yes. Aside from Sayyidah Khatija radiallahu ta'ala anha and Sayyidah Maymuna radiallahu ta'ala anha, the mothers of the believers, the rest of the mothers of the believers are all buried in Jannah to Baqi. How many are they in total? 11 Azwaj Mutahara. Yes. 11 Azwaj Mutahara. Let's go through all together. You hear me see that, huh? So go on and after Suleiman, you can start us off. I'll give you the easy one. Yes, Sayyidah Khatija. 
And this that was now married for 25 years with Sayyidah Khatija. Six of the seven children of Islam had with Sayyidah Khatija. Two sons, four daughters, Qasim, Abdullah, Zainab, Ruqayya, Humiku, Suman, Khatun, Jannat, Fatima, Zahra, Radiyallahu Taranha. Radiyallahu Taranhunna. Somebody from the sister's side. First few you should know. Yes, Sayyidah Aisha. Radiyallahu Taranha. Yes, write this list down. You've got plenty of spaces on your papers. Okay, write this list down. Maybe for some of you, probably these 11 names for the first time. Yes. Sayyidah Aisha, the daughter of Sayyiduna Abu Bakr Siddiq, radiallahu ta'ala anhu. Yes. Okay. Another name from the boy's side. G. G. Okay, maybe not then. G, G, and it then. Do they have to be in order? No, no. We've already lost the order. G. Umu Mu'minin Sayyidina Hafsa. Sayyidina Hafsa, good. And if you're clever like uh, Muhammad is, you're going through the notes. Sayyidina Hafsa is the daughter of who? Sayyidina Umar Farooq radiallahu ta'ala anhu. Number four, I'll do this one. Sayyidina Maymuna, as we just mentioned. Yes. Sayyidina Maymuna radiallahu ta'ala anha. And all 11 of them are our mothers, spiritual mothers. Juvenia. Say the Juvenia. Other than you two now, okay? We know you got the trick. Yes. Somebody from the sister side. Number five, sixth one. Good. Sayyidina Umm Salama. Seventh one. Somebody from the second line. Zainab. We've got two Zainabs, yes? Zainab binti Khuzayma. And Zainab binti Jash. Nine. Nearly there. Go on, Muhammad. Uh, Sayyida Maria, Maria Kibdiya. Ah, now here is where the discussion flourishes. Yeah. Sayyida Maria Kibdiya technically didn't marry the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. She's the mother of Sayyidina Ibrahim, the third son of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. But she was a Coptic slave girl. Yes. They are, don't go into this category. Mothers of the believers. We honor them and love them, just as we love the mothers of the believers. But technically, they did not marry the Prophet. So we want the sister side. G. Three left. Two start with S. G. Sayyida Safiya. Sayyida Sauda. And number 11, Sayyida Ummi Habiba. You understand?
11 ازواج متحرات Three key discussions left. Last half an hour or so. And we probably finished, we will finish before the advertised time of 7.30. History in the making. Yes. I came on time and I'm going to finish well before time as well. And if so, should get some sort of a medal, huh? Anyway, seventh year done. Eighth year after his work. Nabi Salatul eldest daughter, Sayyida Zainab passes away in this eighth year after Hijrah. Okay? Sayyida Zainab passes away. <coughs> Nabi Salatul Salam in total had four daughters. Imagine that as a father having to bury your own child, the assumption usually is what? That our children will live and we will go first. And we as parents will go first. That isn't always the case. And Nabi Salatu Islam, with his own blessed hands, buried six of his seven children himself. Sayyidah Zainab had two children. One was called Ali, the other was called Umama. And Sayyidah Fatima advised Sayyidina Ali Murtaza, her husband, to marry Sayyidah Umama after her demise. On the wish of Sayyidah Fatima, Sayyidah Ali married her. Yes. Then we have the Battle of Muta. Not going to go into too much detail, but it's one of the three key points that I need to mention before the end of the Seerah. Fatih Makkah being the other one and the farewell Hajj being the last thing. And the others uh, details we'll just quickly whisk through. So the Battle of Muta. Muta is an area of Syria. And it was here in the eighth year after Hijrah that a major, major battle took place between the Muslims and the Kuffar. 3,000 Muslims against an army of 100,000 Kuffar mainly of the Romans. So write it down. Three thousand well, you got it written there, sorry. Three thousand companions fought against one thousand one hundred thousand Romans. Okay. Nabi Salatu Sam didn't travel with the army. They stayed in Al Medina Tul Munawwara. Al Medina Tul Munawwara. Rabbi Salatu Sam gave the flag of Islam to Sayyidina Zayd bin Harith. Who is Sayyidina Zayd bin Harith? He was the first freed slave to accept Islam. Remember? Sayyidina Zayd bin Harith was the one who was gifted by Sayyidina Khatija to the Prophet Sallallahu on the occasion of their marriage. And Nabi Salatu Islam said that if Zaid bin Harith falls to his martyrdom, then Ja'far al-Tayyar should take the flag of Islam. Sayyidina Ali's elder brother. And if Ja'far al-Tayyar falls to his martyrdom, then Abdullah bin Rawaha should take the flag of Islam. And if Abdullah bin Rawaha is martyred, then the Muslims should choose a leader, a commander from amongst themselves. All three were martyred. 
One by one. Some so we know Sayyidina Ja'far al-Tayyab. His blessed body was cut into two pieces. Twelve Sahaba Ikram became Shaheed in this battle. That's definitely not in your dogs. And where was Nabi Salatu Salam? In Medina. And Nabi Salatu Salam, despite being in the city of Medina, hundreds if not thousands of miles away, he was able to witness the Battle of Muta, and not only witness the Battle of Muta, report what was happening on every stage of the battle to the Sahaba Ikram. He gave news to those who were in Medina with him that Zayd has fallen to his martyrdom, Ja'far has fallen to his martyrdom, Abdullah bin Rabah has fallen to his martyrdom, and Khalid Saifun bin Suyufillah, Khalid bin Walid, a sword from the swords of Allah, has become the commander in chief. Yes. And whilst Nabi Islam was doing beyond of this, tears were flowing from his blessed eyes. Tears were flowing from his blessed eyes. Say the Asma bint Umais, the wife was in a Ja'far Shaheed. She narrates that I had just given a bath to my children, oil their hair, and knead the dough to make bread for them. When the Messenger of Allah entered my home and said to me that bring the children of Ja'far to me. When they came before him, Nabi Islam began to smell them and kiss them, and tears were flowing from his blessed eyes. At that point, the wife of Sayyidina Ja'far asks that is there any news regarding Ja'far and his companions? Nabi Dishtat Muslim responded by saying, yes, today they have become shaheed. وَلَا تَقُولُوا لِمَنْ يُخْتَلُ فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ أَمْوَاتِ بَلْ أَحْيَاءٌ وَلَا كِلَّا تَشْعُرُونَ An emotion began to overcome her. And Nabi Dishtat Muslim told the Azwaj Mutahharat that go, Prepare food for the family of Ja'far. So this is where we get the whole concept of taziyat and helping one another and making food. And this is sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ, which today people do inkar of. But today people will reject and oppose. Pata hi ni te bas loke par itraz kande rene. Thikha. Whilst the battle was ongoing, Nabi Salaat was down, as I mentioned, in Medina Sharif. And during the battle, both arms of Sayyidina Ja'far al-Tayyar were cut off. Both bazus became shaheed. Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Allah has given Ja'far two wings in Jannah in compensation for his arms. Yes. And with these wings, he may fly to wherever he wishes to go. Al-Batta. It is for this reason that Sayyidina Umar would greet Sayyidina Ja'far al-Tayyar's son and said to him, uh, Sayyidina Abdullah was his name, Assalamu alaikum, the peace be upon you, O son of the possessor of two wings. Yes. And Nabi Islam was, was sat on their member. Uh, they were, they said, Assalamu alaikum. Sahaba Ikram, who is Nabi Islam giving salam to? Who is he addressing? So one Sahabi asked Ya Rasulullah, who are you talking to? And Nabi Salaam, and who are you giving salam to? And Nabi Salaam said, I'm giving salam to Ja'far al -Tanya. That his ruh, his spirit has just flown past him. Allahu Akbar, yes. So the battle of Muta. But all this is leading to the conquest of Makkah. In this month of Ramadan. Ittifaqan. In this month of Ramadan, Fatih Makkah takes place. Yes. One of the terms of the treaty was broken. And when that term, those conditions were violated, Nabi Islam told the Sahaba Ikram that Yaroyo, get ready, uh, we are marching towards Makkah to Mukarram. 10,000 companions 
accompanied the Prophet sallallahu ta'ala Yes. And they make their way, they make their way towards al makkah al-Mukarramah. And there's very little that the Kuffar can do. Iblis Islam makes announcement and they leave Medina Sharif on the 10th of Ramadan. Write this down. Huh? They leave Medina Sharif on the 10th of Ramadan in this 8th year after Hijrah. 10,000 Sahaba Ikram. A lot of detail mentioned here. But many are forgiven on this occasion. Many are forgiven on this occasion, including Abu Sufyan. He accepts Islam as well. As Abu Sufyan is the father of Umm al Mu'mineen, Sayyidah Umm Habiba. Key point to mention here. So Umm Habiba is the sister of Sayyidina Amin Mu'awiyah. So now at this point in the seerah, whenever you read it, whenever you study it, if an enemy accepts Islam, you then refer to him by honorable title. Sayyiduna Abu Sufyan, radiyallahu ta'ala anhu, Sahabi Rasul, sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam. His wife, the staunch enemy of Islam, the one responsible for the martyrdom of Sayyiduna Hamza, Hind was her name, she also accepts Islam as well. And Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi says, that whoever enters the house of Abu Sufyan will be safe. And Nabi Islam Islam with the army of Sahaba, 10,000 in total, they march towards the Kaaba al Sharifa. Abu Sufyan, who is with Sayyidina Abbas, the Prophet Sallallahu uncle, he witnesses this scene from a distance and he says uh, that your nephew has become a king. Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam upon his camel Kaswa, Sayyidina Abu Bakr Siddiq on his right hand side, Sayyidina Usayyid bin Hudair radiallahu ta'ala anhuma on his left hand side. Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam wearing a black Imam Sharif. Uh, Abu Sufyan, who's just accepted Islam. He says that your nephew has become a king. Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam's uncle, Sayyidina Abbas, only one of two uncles who accepted Islam. Sayyidina Amin Hamza and Sayyidina Abbas. Sayyidina Abbas replied and said that you are mistaken. This is not because he has become a king. Rather, what you are witnessing is the glory of his prophethood. The glory of his prophethood. Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is now 61 years old. Yes, 61 years old. Allah Akbar. Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam enters reading and reciting Surah Al-Fatiha. Inna fatahna laka fatham mubeen. That Surah which was revealed on the occasion of Hudaybiyah, Two years later now, Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is reciting that very same surah as he enters into the vicinity of the Haram. They arrive at Baytullah. Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam with his Sahaba Ikram. They enter into the vicinity of the Haram. And Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi with his Asar Mubarak, his blessed staff, begins to point out the idols one by one. 360 idols in and around the Kaaba to Sharifa. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi destroys them and purifies the Kaaba and fulfills his responsibility as the true successor of Sayyidina Ibrahim Alayhi Salaam. So the Kaaba to Sharifa is cleansed from all impurities, idols and shirk. قُلْ جَاءَ الْحَقُّ وَزَهَقَ الْبَاطِلِ إِنَّ الْبَاطِلَ كَانَ زَهُكَ Yes. Or is it like say, Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam
he is presented the keys to the doors of the Kaaba. And Nabi Salaam, after being given these keys, he handed them keys to Hazrat Uthman bin Talha. Uthman bin Talha. Khuduha khalidatan. Talidan. This take this key, it shall be with your family always, and only an oppressor shall take them off you. And even till today, the keys to the doors of the Kaaba are with the descendants of Sayyidina Uthman bin Talha. Yes. And then Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam addresses the Kuffar of Makkah. Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is looking at them. Thousands, tens of thousands in attendance. Sahaba Ikram are there as well. And all of them looking at the Nurani Wadduha Chera of Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And Nabi Salatu Salam sees a visible shame on their faces. <coughs> These were the very same people who placed thorns in his path. These were the very same people who threw stones at him, who attempted to kill him on several occasions, who mercilessly injured his blessed tooth and caused his face to be covered with his own blood. These were the very same people who defamed him, mocked him, swore at him, insulted him, strangled him, knocked his pregnant daughter Sayyida Zainab off her camel with a spear which led to her losing her child, unborn baby. These were the very same people who drove the Prophet out of the city of his birth, al makkatul Mukarrama. These were the very same people who were responsible for the martyrdom of his uncle, Sayyidina Amir Hamza. These were the very same people who at their hands, the likes of Sayyidina Bilal Habshi suffered, the likes of Sayyidina Shuaib Rumi suffered, the likes of Sayyidina Ammar bin Yasir and Sayyidina Habbab and Zaid bin Wathan, uh, Watna. There are many others uh, suffered at the hands of, uh, and they were tied with ropes and dragged across the hot, desert sun and they were made to sleep on coals of fire. They were the ones responsible for cruelly and deceitly uh, torturing and persecuting the companions of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So they are now all holding their breath to see what the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam will do to them. <coughs> and no doubt if he wanted, he could have cut them into pieces and fed them to the dogs if he wanted. Uh, this was a day of victory, a, a great day of honor. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says to the, uh, the audience of the Quraysh, uh, what should I do to you today? Yes. And the words here, Qadi Iyad Rahmatullahi Ta'ala Alayhi Wasallam as well. Yes. Uh, what should I, how should I treat you today? How should I treat you? How should my suluk be to you today? Yes. If you find them words. Uh, here we go. That. Durushri if Allah masalli ala sayyidina wa nabiyyina wa shafiyyina wa maulana muhammadin abdika wa rasul. Ah, ma taqulu inni fa'ilun bikum. Yes. That, page number 75 here, that how should I be towards you today? Uh, how should I be towards you today? And qalu khaydan, that we expect you to be good towards us. Akhun karimun, wabnu akhin karimin, that you are a noble brother, the son of a noble brother. And Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam at that point said to them that Aqulu kama qala akhi Yusuf that I will say to you what Yusuf Alaihi Wasallam said to his brothers La tathriba alaykum al yawm that today there is no revenge. Today there is no revenge. Today each and every one of you is free. Each and every one of you idhabu fa'antum al-tulaqa each and every one of you is free. Each and every one of you is forgiven. 
And when Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi demonstrated and showed this great level of mercy, and this is the peak of his mercy, وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَاكَ إِلَّا رَحْمَةً لِلْعَالَمِينَ This is the peak of his mercy. This example epitomizes the great rahmat and mercy of the Prophet Sallallahu When he demonstrated this mercy to the criminals of the Kuffar, of the Quraysh, those very same criminals, they burst into tears. And they hung their heads in shame. And each and every one of them loudly recited the kalima and declared the shahada. Ashhadu an la ilaha illa Allahu wahdahu la sharika la wa ashhadu anna Muhammadan abduhu wa rasuluhu. So the entire haram was engulfed by the illumination of Islam. Yeah? Where there was shirk and uh, polytheism happening and the darkness of kufr and shirk which was uh, engulfed in that city of Makkah, that darkness of kufr and shirk was lifted and the illumination and nur and roshni of Islam entered into Makkah. Yes. Allah, and tell me, has history ever witnessed such an act of mercy, such an act of compassion and sincerity as we, that which was demonstrated by the Prophet when the kings of the dunya uh, conquered their lands, Napoleon and Genghis Khan and others, names that you know better than I do, we all know and we've read the pages of history and we've seen documentaries and we've studied in school how those kings would behave, how those leaders would behave. Here, Nabi Salatu Wasalam, uh, this is how he treated his enemies. Imagine how he was towards his companions. And how he is towards you and me. Harisun alaykum bil mu'minina ra'ufun rahim. Yes. Allah Akbar. Fatih Makkah in this eighth year after Hijrah. Eighth year after Hijrah. Makkah is conquered. Makkah is conquered. Yes. Ah, and then the famous incident happens. After Nabi Salatu Salaam forgives each and every one of them, who does Nabi Salatu Salaam call to call the Adhan? Sayyidina Bilal al Habshi. That very same Bilal who was dragged through the streets of Makkah, that Bilal who was frowned upon because of the skin of the color of his skin, that very same Bilal is now told by the Prophet that, oh Bilal, this honor isn't for Abu Bakr Siddiq. This honor isn't for Umar Farooq. This honor isn't for Uthman al Ghani. This honor isn't for Ali al Murtaza. All of them were worthy of this honor. But this honor was reserved for Bilal al Habshi radiallahu ta'ala anhu. The Mu'addin of Rasul Akram sallallahu ta'ala. This is Islam. This is Islam which we have today forgotten and we have neg neglected and we have forsaken. Today, unfortunately, we frown upon somebody because of the. And we're talking about us, Muslims from the Indian subcontinent, Pakistanis, Indians. I'm sorry to say, but we are the most racist of people. And we will judge people because of the color of their skin. Islam does not discriminate. There is no prejudice within Islam. Islam gives honor to Bilal Habshi. Islam gives honor to those who are dragged through the streets of Makkah. So much so that this very same Bilal, he stands upon the roof of the Kaaba and calls the Adhan. Uh, he stands upon the roof of the Kaaba. And Ajib Kisam, one Vakya that we read upon this, Ajib Kisam ka Vakya, that when he stands upon the roof of the Kaaba, Nabi Salatu Wasallam and the Sahaba are doing the Tawaf. Sayyidina Bilal is calling the Adhan. And as he is calling the Adhan, and as Nabi Salatu Wasallam is making Tawaf around the Kaaba, Sayyidina Bilal begins to follow the messenger of Allah He makes uh, the Adhan whilst following the Prophet sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam. Yes. Yeh mahabbat e sahaba. Adab e sahaba. Yes. Sayyidina Bilal e Habshi calls the Adhan. But despite this great mercy that was demonstrated by the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, there were certain criminals who were not pardoned of their crimes. And this is something that when we study the seerah, Today in the 21st century, many will say, oh, gee, no doubt, Islam amanka das deta hai. 
Islam is a religion of peace and mercy. But remember this, that where there is aman, peace and mercy, Saat Saat Islam also gives the Pegam of Ghairat as well. Islam gives the Pegam of Haya as well. Islam gives the Pegam of modesty and morality as well. The ye kya hai? That you give the Pegam of Aman and peace, but at the same time, huh? brothers are losing their lives in Syria, if I'm talking today. Syria and Palestine and Burma, children are being burnt alive. It doesn't go hand in hand. Yes, Islam no doubt gives the Pegam of Aman, but Islam also gives the Dars of Gherat as well. Yes, and there were some criminals who were not pardoned because of their crimes. And Nabi Islam said that if these people do not accept Islam, they should be killed wherever they are found. Even if they hold on to the Hilaf of the Kaaba. Yes, and some of these criminals accepted Islam, but others were killed. Why? Because of their blasphemy and ghustahi towards the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And if anyone disrespects and dishonors the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, then there is no, huh? there is no rest, uh, there is no relief for that person. Murderer or history canal, uh, a slave girl, Kariba was her name, and she used to repeat poems disrespecting and dishonoring the Prophet and other names mentioned here as well. One individual, Harith was his name, killed by Sayyidina Ali Murtaza, again because of the great pain that he caused to the Prophet Yes. <laughs> Some fled the scenes, like Ikrama ibn Abi Jahal, the son of Abu Jahal. Yes. Later he became a Sahabi, a Rasul, like this. Safwan bin Umayya, the son of Umayya bin Khalaf, the master of Abu Sayyidina bin Ali Abshi, he also fled as well, went to Jeddah. Huh. Baral. And he did not accept Islam until the Battle of Hunayn, and thereafter he became a true Muslim. Sayyidina Ka'ab bin Zuhair, yes, and Wahshi, Wahshi also uh, accepted Islam on this occasion of Fatih Makkah. Who is Wahshi? The one responsible for the martyrdom of Sayyidina Amin Hamza radiallahu Yes. The Wahshi bin Harab, he accepted Islam. But Nabi Islam said to him that, Oh Wahshi, from today onwards do not come in front of me. After today do not come in front of me. Yes, the Sahabi became very grieved by this. Why did Nabi Islam say this? Nabi Islam said, Oh Wahshi, every time I see you, I remember my uncle. And I remember what you did. Uh, so it is better that you don't come in front of me. And the Sahaba, uh, the ulama said, that this Sahabi is the lowest ranked Sahabi called Wahshi bin Harab. Lowest ranked Sahabi. How many Sahaba are there? Ji Afi Suleiman, you can say it out loud. Don't be shy. 124,000. Yes, last 10 15 minutes we're going to look at that on the occasion of Hajjatul Wada. I don't think I'm going to break the record. Huh? So don't order the medal. Huh? So, Baqaida, Nabi Islam said to Wahshi, don't come in front of me. For every time you do, I remember my uncle. Love is rank Sahabi. But his maqam of martaba is greater than every Ghos, every Khwaja, every Qutub, every Sufi, every Baba, every Imam put together. Sahabi is Sahabi. Yes, Sahabi is Sahabi. Yes. And no doubt, during the Khilafat of Sayyidina, Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu ta'ala who it was Wahshi bin Harab who was responsible for killing Musaylam al-Kadhab the one who claimed to be a false prophet yes and he used to say Kataltu khaynan nasi fil jahiliyyati that I killed the best of people during the age of ignorance 
وقتل تو شر الناسی فی الاسلامی and I've killed the worst of people who was in the force of Islam apna apna maqam who are we to judge who are we to judge that on one hand he killed Sayyidina Amir Hamza the best of people on the other hand he killed Musayla Maqadzaab the worst of people Allah gives honor and izzat to whomsoever he will Today you may be disgraced, tomorrow you may be honored. Do we understand? That's why we should never judge. We should never judge. A lot more detail can be mentioned. Let's finish this off. A couple of key points left in this eighth year after Hijrah. The Battle of Hunayn takes place. The Battle of Hunayn. After uh, Fateh Makkah. Yes, after Fateh Makkah. Or Baqaida. Hmm. Hunayn is a place between Makkah and Taif. Yes. And Nabi Islam prepared an army of 12,000. 10,000 that consisted of the Ansar and Muhajirun who came with him from Medina and 2,000 who had just become Muslims. Every Just become Muslims, no respite, no relief. On that queen, six months off, let's go. کوئی اس طریقے نہ اپنی دین پختگی ہوئے جہاد 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 why defend the honor of Islam defend the honor of the Prophet صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم ناموس رسالت عزت رسول yes so the battle of Hunayn takes place like the Sayyiduna Ibrahim the Prophet صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم's youngest son is born in this eight year after Hijrah and he lived for approximately two and a half years Nabi Salaam Salaam had Sayyiduna Ibrahim, his beloved son, with the uh, Honorable Sayyida Maria Qiddiya radiallahu ta'ala anha. Yes. And what happened, Sayyidina Ibrahim was born on that day when the solar, yani he passed away on that day when the solar eclipse took place. Solar eclipse. And people began to believe that the solar eclipse took place because of the death of a noble person. So they associated the eclipse with Sayyidina Ibrahim. Uh, to eliminate this ignorant belief, the Prophet ﷺ gave a sermon in which he said that the sun or moon does not eclipse on the birth or death of anyone, but rather Allah makes his creation fear him because of them. Yes. And that's when he performed Salatul Khawf with the congregation. Okay. Ninth year after Hijrah, Battle of Tabuk. Yes. Tabuk is a place between Sham and Medina. Yes. Or Isitrike say Tabuk was Baqaida. That occasion. This was now a battle that took place in the month of Raja. Write it down. The month of Rajab in the ninth year after Hijrah. So this was that battle that many companions demonstrated their great uh, prowess and the great might that they had in terms of their wealth. So companions gave their wealth in abundance to support the army, including Sayyidina Abu Bakr al-Siddiq and Sayyidina Uthmani Ghani. al batta Sayyidina Uthmani Ghani, Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that who uh, will equip the army of difficulty the army of difficulty, the battle of Tabu. And Sahaba Ikram were all sat there, Sayyidina Uthman Ghani stood up. Sayyidina Uthman said, Ya Rasulullah, Ya Habibullah, I will provide 1,000 camels, saddle, and 70 horses as transport for the soldiers, and 1,000 gold coins as expenditure for the army. Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi accepted this occasion, uh, this uh, donation, and Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi said, اللهم أرضى عن عثمان فإني عن وراد. that oh Allah be pleased with Uthman as I am pleased with him. and this was one of two occasions that Sayyidina Uthman Ghani purchased paradise from the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم on this earth. the first occasion was when they initially came to Medina when they purchased the wealth from the Jews. yes. and this was the second occasion that he purchased Jannah from the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم. And regarding Sayyidina Abu Bakr Siddiq's wealth, Allahu Akbar. Famous narration mentioning Jamil Tirmizi Sharif. 
Dan sê nou, Omre Faru, my nabili sallat was made this ilar, made this announcement, that who is going to help the army of difficulty, who is going to equip the army of difficulty, and help them towards the battle of Tabuk. Sayyidina Umar said, today I will outdo Sayyidina Abu Bakr Siddiq. So what did he do? Sayyidina Umar Farooq took all of his wealth and split his wealth into two. Left one half for his family and gave one half to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. At this time, at this point, Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi accepted uh, and Sayyidina Umar Farooq said to Sayyidina Umar Farooq that how much wealth have you brought and what have you left at home for your family? Ya Rasulullah, half of my wealth is present before you and half I have left with my family. At the same time, Abu Bakr al-Siddiq radiallahu ta'ala who was gathering everything that he had. Pots, pans, dirham, dinars, everything in his home. al Batta the ulama said that he even took off the buttons from his blessed shirt and he replaced these buttons with thorns. And then he comes to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi says to Sayyidina Abu Bakr Siddiq that Ya Abu Bakr, what have you left for your family? Jawab me sabak hai. Sayyidina Abu Bakr Siddiq says, Abkaitu, abkaitu lahum Allah wa Rasul. That I have left Allah and His Rasul for my family. Allah is the soul. When Sayyidina Umar Farooq saw this, Sayyidina Umar says, Now I have realized I can never outdo Abu Bakr Siddiq. And Nabi Salatu Salam said, Ma baina kuma, ma baina kalimat alim tay kuma. Yes, that the difference between the two, Yani Abu Bakr and Umar, can be understood from the difference of their answers. That one said, I have left half of my family. And one said, I have left Allah and His Rasul for my family. Don't worry, Allah and His Rasul is with us. Yes. And then there's an extension to this narration, Abdul Rahman. Uh, the name slipped my head. Abdul Rahman bin Sulami, I think, huh? one of the great scholars of his time. He does not of the revival that comes after this. But after a short while, uh, Nabi Salaatu Salaam was sacked with the Sahaba after this incident. And Abu Bakr gives everything and he replaces the buttons on his shirt with thorns. After a short while, Jibreel comes from the heavens with a bara'at of malaika. And they are wearing the same attire and the same garments as Abu Bakr was wearing. Uh, Jibreel gives salam to the Prophet Sallallahu And Jibreel says to the Prophet Sallallahu that Allah is giving salam to Abu Bakr as uh, Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, yeah, Jibreel, are you, why are you wearing this clothing? Jibreel said, Ya Rasulullah, not only am I wearing this clothing, all of the angels, the malaika in Jannah are wearing this clothing. This is the sacrifice of Abu Bakr Siddiq, radiyallahu ta'ala anhu, and Dazalah. Yes. So Jibreel said that, Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Ya Rasulullah, Allah is giving salam to Abu Bakr Siddiq. And Allah is asking Abu Bakr, Allah is asking you to ask Abu Bakr that, Hal anta, uh, that is he content with Allah Almighty? Hal anta an Rabbi karadin? Hal anta an Rabbi karadin? That ask Abu Bakr, is he content with the with is he content with Allah Almighty? Wala sofa yuqtika, Rabbu kafatarba. Yes, is he content with Allah Almighty? Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam calls Abu Bakr Siddiq. Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam gives the salam from Allah Almighty to Abu Bakr Siddiq. And Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam poses this question that Ya Abba Bakir, Allah is asking me to ask you Hal anta an Rabbi karadin? That are you content with your Lord? And when Sayyidina Abu Bakr Siddiq heard this, like this, yes, Bila Tashbih wa Tamthil, three times with the right finger, Ana an Rabbi radin, Ana an Rabbi radin, Ana an Rabbi radin. That I am content with my Lord, I am content with my Lord, I am content with my Lord. And he goes into a state of wajd and ecstasy, yes? Huh? This wajd that he experiences. And the Sufiya said that this was the first wajd in the majlis of Rasul Akram. Huh? He's given everything in the way of Allah and his Rasul. And he's still saying, I am content with Allah, I am content with Allah, I am content with Allah. La in la azidanna. That the one who is grateful, no doubt, Allah will give him even more. Yes. Sayyidina Abdurrahman bin Auf. 
he gave 40,000 dirhams towards this army. Because there were no, now there were more soldiers, more Muslims, more Sahaba. So there was a need for uh, the resources to increase. This is why we mentioned this, okay? Uh, so there was 3,000 Sahaba who left with the Prophet and went towards Tabuk. Sayyidina Ali Murtaza was appointed the uh, Khalifa to administer Madinat al Munawwara. And Sayyidina Ali says to the Prophet, وسلم, Ya Rasulullah, have you left me with the women and children whilst you go for jihad? And Abdul Salat Wasallam said, Ala tarba an takuna minni bi manzilati haruna wa min Musa illa annahu laysa nabija ba'di. Bukhari Sharif Kelfa. And Sayyidina Ali said, Ya Rasulullah, you leave me with the women and children whilst you go for jihad. And Abdul Salat Wasallam responded by saying that, Oh Ali, are you not pleased that you have the same relationship with me as Harun al-Islam has with his brother Musa, the only difference is, know that there shall never be any prophet to come after me. La nabiyya ba'di. Yes, laysa nabiyya ba'di. You understand? So ultimately, some miracles happen on the way as well. Now I'm getting cautious of the time. I've outstayed my welcome, I think, yes? Baqaida, uh, they are speaking out. Uh, successful at Tabuk when the Roman army see the Sahaba at Tabuk yes they, they essentially Baqaida flee and they become scared and the Prophet Sallallahu stayed at Tabuk for approximately 20 days yes no fighting took place and they returned to Medina to Manabah Masjid Dirar is burnt how many of you know the story behind Masjid al Dirar? You're going to say that's why we're here. Masjid al Dirar was built by the hypocrites. A stone throw away from Masjid al Quba. Yes. A stone throw away from Masjid al Quba. Or Baqaida. Allah wa ta'ala mentions Masjid al Dirar in the Quran. Yes. Allah mentions Masjid Dirar in the Quran. And time doesn't permit to go into the full detail. I'll just give you the reference. Surah number 9, verse number 107. Surah At Tawbah. Surah At The hypocrites built this masjid in competition to Masjid Quba. Why did they build this masjid to cause divisions? A few years, those very same people read with you as well. And a few years later, a small group from those people that read with you, they break away. We're going to do, our, do, our, do things our own way. So these people who do this today are similar to the hypocrites. They are similar to the hypocrites. Changi Wadi Masjid de Kuba Kuldiya Go pray your salat there, but no, they want you to build their own masjid. What was the masjid called? Dirar. Yes. And what did they want? They wanted legitimacy. So they said to the Prophet. Huh? And these were those hypocrites who didn't participate in the fight in a tabuk. One is the Basji Namaza, 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 Namaza. Samji Nam. Bas Namaz, 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 Namaz. Sahaba. They knew that namaz bhi aapni jaga, namaz bhi na chonde. Roza, zakat, hajj aapni jaga. We're not going to abandon those things. But asal deen is mahabbat e rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Asal deen is adab e rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Yes, this is the difference between sahabi and wahabi. Yes. So they wanted Nabi Islam Islam to pray in this masjid. So up until the day of judgment, People will come to the masjid, like we go to Masjid al-Kuba and we pray there. Yes. 
Allah Almighty revealed the verse. Surah number 9, verse number 107. Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala revealed the verse. And mentioned this masjid by name in the Quran. وَالَّذِينَ اتَّخَذُوا مَسْجِدًا دِرَارًا وَكُفْرًا وَكُفْرًا وَتَفْرِيكًا بَيْنَ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ وَإِلْسَادًا لِمَنْ حَارَبَ اللَّهَ وَرَسُولَهُ مِنْ قَبْلُ وَلَا يُفْلِ وَلَا يَحْلِفُنَّ إِنْ أَرَدْنَا إِلَّا الْحُسْنَى Allah says that these people, they are only opening the masjid to cause divisions between the believers. And they are waging war against Allah and His Rasul. And they say that we only intend good by this masjid. Allah says, Wallahu yashhadu innahum lakadibun. Allah says, I am a witness that they are lying. They have no good intentions, they only have ill intentions. So Allah then instructs the Prophet ﷺ to burn the masjid to the ground. Burn the masjid to the ground. So Nabi Sallallahu gives instruction to the Sahaba to burn the masjid to the ground. Lo and behold, the masjid is burned to the ground. The masjid is burned to the ground. And these hypocrites are exposed. Yes, they are exposed, badly exposed. So rather than the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam praying there, the masjid was burned to the ground. Masjid, masjid, look on a masjid and lakaga. Yes. But from the verses of the Quran, we understand what? لا تقوم فيه أبدا لا مسجد أسس على التقوى Yes? That ultimately, never stand in a masjid where there is no piety. For indeed, a masjid is built upon the foundations of taqwa. Yeh kya? That you open a masjid, but you, you've got issues with people standing and doing salat wa salam after Jummah. You open a masjid and you've got issues with people saying, or writing, Ya Allah, Ya Muhammad. You open a masjid and you've got issue with people doing tazkirah of the Sahaba, tazkirah of the Ahlul Bayt in that masjid. Galfari, which hora, na? There's something else in it then. So Allah says in the Quran, a masjid can only be built upon the foundations of taqwa. People often ask this question, can we go read namaz in such a such a masjid? Don't you dare. Don't read in that masjid. Certainly don't read behind the imam. Because Allah says in the Quran, Ussisa, la masjidun ussisa ala taqwa. I mean, look, is the Rikana Merin al Narazo on his Jumlepar. But there is no salah in the masajid. Jita, Khatme Nabuka in Karoe, Kadiani, they don't accept the Khatme Nabuka Nabrisat, the Jabanda Hotaja Namaspro. Hotaja Namaspro. Chica. J. Sahaba Kranti Toki, Tohino idea. And they're insulting and they're disrespecting of the Sahaba. Uh, would you go read Salah there? No, no, no. So you won't read there as well. So they're disrespecting the Ahlul Bayt. Would you read Salah there? No, no, no. So why are you going to go read there then? You understand? Huh? So you only go and read those places where there is Taqwa. Taqwa. Prohibition of interest was historically uh, introduced in that ninth year as well. The final years, yes, the last five minutes or so. Uh, well, I don't know about you, but I'm feeling the fast now. Yes? One major event may left to mention, and then we just talk about the Prophet Sallallahu leaving this dunya. In the 10th year after Hijrah, we have Hajjatul Wada. So in the month of Dhul Qa'da, Nabi Nisratul Islam leave Madinah to Munawwara with the intention to perform Hajj. How many Umrahs did Nabi Nisratul Islam perform during their lifetime? Four in total. Two we looked at today, and then one before they perform the Hajj, and they perform before the Hajj. Yes. And Shahid Bain Razo again. You missed all the juicy bits. And have to watch it later. Inshallah. Inshallah. Acha, okay. What was I saying? Now, four Umrahs during his blessed noble lifetime. And one Hajj, one and only Hajj. And this is the occasion of the first and final Hajj of the life of the Prophet. 124,000 Sahaba accompanied him on this Hajj. This is now the peak of their tabligh, of their mission, mission in Nabuat or Risalat. 
On the 4th of Dhul Hijjah, they arrived in Makkah to Mukarramah. Nabi Islam arrived, announcing his arrival, the small children of the Banu Hashim, they run towards the Prophet ﷺ in happiness. And some of them were made to sit on the camel of the Prophet ﷺ. The same camel, camel's name is? Aswa. The same camel Nabi Islam was upon when he entered into Medina Sharif. The same camel he was upon during the Battle of Badr, Uhud, Handak, Khaybar, Tabuk. And the same camel he was upon when he entered into Makkah to Mukarramah on Fateh Makkah that we looked at a short while ago. That very same camel is upon on the occasion of Hajjat al -Wada. And this camel is more honorable and more worthy than you and me put together. The Dachi Mubarak of Nabi Salatu Salam. Yes. Nabi Salatu Salam performed the Fajr on the 4th of Dhul Hijjah. The Tawa. And they make Ghusl there. And then they enter into the vicinity of the Haram. And they make Tawa for the Kaaba to Sharifa. Allahumma anta salam. Wa minka salam. Hayyina rabbana bis salam. Allahumma zid hadha al bayta. Tashrifan wa ta'zeeman wa takreeman wa mahabatan wa zid man habbahu wa a'tamarahu man hajjahu wa a'tamarahu takreeman wa tashrifan wa ta'zeeman that oh Allah Nabi Salaatu Salaam make this dua that oh Allah you are peace and from you is peace oh Allah keep us alive with peace oh Allah increase the goodness respect and dignity of this house and increase the honor of those who perform hajj and umrah at this house Yani he was making dua for you and me 1400 years ago. And if you haven't been, I make dua, Allah gives you the tawfiq. Yes. Nabi Salaatu Salaam was performing the dua, they kissed the Al-Hajr Al-Aswad. Yes. Three rounds performed in Ramal, four rounds performed units, dua uh, performed normally, seven rounds in total. Yes. And Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam then performed two units of prayer, two rakats of salah next to Maqam Ibrahim. What taqidu min Maqam Ibrahim? Musalla. And then they make their way towards Safa and Marwa. Inna Safa wal Marwa ta min Shahirillah. And they complete the sa'i between Safa and Marwa. And Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam do not remove the ihram after completing the Umrah. Huh? And then on Thursday, the eighth of Dhul Hijjah. They set out for Mina and they perform the five prayers at Mina and thereafter they leave for Arafat on the, on the Friday, on the Friday the 9th of Dhul Hijjah. And it was here at Arafat that Nabi Salaatu Salaam, they uh, addressed the Jama'at of Sahaba. How many in total? 124,000 companions uh, who were with the Prophet Sallallahu And Nabi Salaatu Salaam delivers the farewell sermon, the farewell Sermon, yes, the final address of the Prophet Sallallahu and many things are mentioned in this historical sermon. One thing I'll touch upon, and maybe one day, inshallah, we'll have a lecture upon this. That ayyuhan nas, ala an rabbukum wahidun wa an abakum wahidun la fadla li arabiyin ala ajamiyin wa la li ahmara ala aswada wa la li aswada ala ahmara illa bi taqwa. Nabi Salaatu Salaam said, O oh people, your Lord is one, and so too is your forefather, Adam al Islam. He is one. No Arab has superiority over a non Arab, and no black has superiority over a white. And the only superiority amongst you is in taqwa, is in piety, is in God fearing us. Inna akramakum inda Allahi atqaqum. Like Allah says in Surah Al Qudarat. So Nabi Salaatu Salaam dispelling all notions of discrimination, prejudice, and establishing equality and fairness within Islam. And like I said earlier, unfortunately, we have neglected these teachings. We have neglected these practices. We have neglected the way of Quran and Sunnah. The, the need is for us to go back to Quran and Sunnah. And Nabi Salaatu Salaam delivers his sermon. And then Nabi Salaatu Salaam said, Allahu mashhad, Allahu mashhad, Allahu mashhad, that Allah be a witness. Oh Allah be a witness, oh Allah be a witness that I have fulfilled my mission. 
Allah reveals the verse of Surah Al-Ma'idah, verse number 3. اليوم أكملت لكم دينكم وأتممت عليكم نعمتي ورضيت لكم الإسلام دينا. That this day I have perfected for you your religion. I have completed my favor upon you and I have chosen Islam as your way of life. Um, the deen is complete now. Deen is mukammal now. Yes, Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam after this sermon, they deliver, they perform Zuhr and Asr with one adhan but two ikamas. And then, uh, and this sermon was delivered where? Jabale Rahmat while sat on the Qaswa and the one at the back of the Majlis, the one at the back of the Medani Arafat, that Sahabi at the back could hear just as clearly as that Sahabi at the front. Just as clearly as that Sahabi at the front. A mu'jiza of the mu'jizat of Rasul Akram sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Mu'jizatun min mu'jizat in Rasul Allahi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Nabi Salatu Salam then have their blessed hair shaven. Yani the rest of the days of Hajj are fulfilled. And Qurbani is offered. And who is that Sahabi who cuts the blessed hair of the, shaves the, and does halak of the blessed hair of the Prophet? His name is Abu Talha Ansari. And he distributes these strands of hair. And who gets one strand of hair? Sayyidina Khalid bin Walid radiallahu ta'ala anhu. And Sayyidina Khalid places that one strand or those strands of hair of the Prophet Sahih Muslim Sharif Kiribat. Ye tabarruk and hair, tabarruk. Uh, blessings from uh, relics of the Prophet. He places it in his, uh, in his turban, in his helmet. Uh, and there was not a single battle in which Sayyidina Khalid bin Walid did not wear that helmet. And in every single battle he was granted victory. And Sayyidina Khalid bin Walid said that this is my Iman and my Vijdan. That is because of the blessings of the noble hair of the Prophet Sallallahu that Allah grants me victory in every battle that I am commander in chief. And there was that one battle, battle of Yarmouk, where his blessed uh, imama, his helmet, his, his turban uh, becomes lost. And he tells the Sahaba, stop fighting, look for that helmet. Sahaba Ikram, some of them gave their lives to find that helmet. When they find the helmet battered and tattered and torn and, and worn out, they said to Sayyidina Khalid, Why did you talk, tell us to stop fighting and look for this helmet? And many of us lost our lives whilst looking for this helmet. Many of us became shaheed. Sayyidina Khalid bin Walid said, I know that which you do not know. For inside this helmet are the blessed hairs of the Prophet And Allah has granted me victory. Every time I have this helmet on, Allah has granted me victory. Yes? Aye, aye, aye. So Hajjat al Yes. Eleventh year. Yes, it's my brother now. Seven months later, we got there. You and me, alhamdulillah. We've been here every month, have we? Yeah. We've done it, alhamdulillah. Nabi Salatu Salam, the last army that he gave command to and gave instruction to was Jashi Usama. And he also known as Sariyai Usama. Monday the 26th of Safar, Nabi Salatu Usama made preparations to do battle with the Romans. And he called Usama bin Zayd. Yes. This is the very same Usama bin Zayd who when Nabi Salatu Usama was delivering the farewell sermon, he was sat in the blessed laps of Rasulullah Wasallam. And who is Usama bin Zayd? He is the son of a ghulam. He is the son of Zayd bin Harith radiallahu ta'ala. Usama bin Zayd, Harith. Zayd bin Harith is who? The first free slave who accepted Islam. The ghulam of Nabi Islam. Sayyidina Usama bin Zayd, he is appointed the leader of the army that would fight against the Romans. And he was appointed leader in the place of his father. Yes. And Sayyidina Usama bin Zayd, his age was considerably, considerably younger than the rest of the Sahaba, but he was still made commander-in-chief. And after Nabi Salatu uh, departed from this dunya, yes, Sayyidina Abu Bakr Siddiq upheld this decision of the Prophet Senior Sahaba came to Sayyidina Abu Bakr and they said, reverse this decision of the Prophet Sayyidina Abu Bakr Siddiq said, no. How can I go against that decision that the Prophet Sallallahu made? So he upheld the decision. Upheld the decision. Do we understand? Or Baqaida, Sayyidina Usama bin Zayd, yes, he 
remained the commander in chief even upon the commander of Sayyidina Abu Bakr al-Siddiq. And then the last thing is Nabi Salatu Salam's veiling from this dunya. Yes. I don't want to mention too much. But the beginning of the sickness was on the night of the 20th of Safar. Write this down. On the night of the 20th of Safar, 11th year after Hijrah. Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi went to Jannah al Baqi and after returning his health began to deteriorate. By Monday of that month, the last Monday of Safar, Nabi Sallallahu condition worsened and Nabi Sallallahu took permission from all of the Azbaj Mutahharat and stayed at the house of Sayyidina Aisha radiallahu ta'ala. Helped by Sayyidina Abbas and Sayyidina Ali Murtaza. Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi <laughs> Excuse me. Nabi Salatu Salam was taken to the house of Sayyidina Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha. Whilst they had the strength, they would lead the prayers in Masjid in Nabi Sharif. But when they didn't have the strength, who was appointed the Imam? Sayyidina Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu In total, 17 prayers were led by Sayyidina Abu Bakr Siddiq. How many? 17. Yes. And one of the last paygams of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, As-salatu wa ma malakat aymanukum. Salah and take care of those under your care. And he, take care of your salah and take care of those who are under your care. Father take care of his children. Husband takes care of his wife. Imam takes care of his muqtadi. Take care of those who are under your care. Namaz na choro and look after one another. Yes. And Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam towards the last moments. Balil Rafiq Il A'la. Balil Rafiq Il A'la. Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Now I desire nothing but only you, O Allah. Only you, O Allah. Yes. And many other things like this as well. Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Yes. Whilst they were resting their blessed head in the laps of Sayyidina Aisha. Huh? Whilst they were resting their blessed head in the laps of Sayyidina Aisha, Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi left this dunya, was physically veiled from this dunya on Monday the 12th of Rabi'ul Awwal Sharif. Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raji'oon. Allahumma salli wa sallim wa barik ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa alihi wa ashabihi Sayyidina Ali Murtaza and the Ahlul Bayt were responsible for performing the Ghusl Sharif of Nabi Salatu Salam Jismi Athar. How is Nabi Salatu Salam's janaza? Reality is that there was no janaza. Uh, groups of Sahaba would enter into the Hujra of Sayyidina Aisha and they would send durood and salawat upon Nabi Salatu Salam. Once the Sahaba had finished doing this, then Malaika would come and send durood and salawat upon Nabi Salatu Salam. And Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam were buried in the Hujra of uh, the house of Sayyidina Aisha, where today they are resting, under the Gumba de Khazra Sharif. Yes, under the Gumba de Khazra Sharif. And the effects of Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam leaving this dunya, we know many Sahaba Ikram, uh, without exaggeration, lost their senses and they did not know what to do. Sayyidina so Uthmani Ghani was so emotional that he began to walk with an increased pace in various directions saying nothing to anyone that he met and not listening to anything as well. Sayyidina Ali Murtaza was in a state of shock and he lost the energy to sit up and wake up. Sayyidina Abdullah bin Anis radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he couldn't endure the sorrowful news of Nabi Salatu Islam's uh, dem dis demise and subsequently he had a heart attack and he passed away from that heart attack. Sahabi who had eyesight, yes, he had eyesight, uh, he became, he was working in his farm he became aware of Nabi Salatu Islam's physical value from this dunya. He raises his hands, makes dua to Allah that, Oh Allah, what use are these eyes to me now? What use are these eyes to me now? Take away my eyesight. Take away my eyesight. There and then that Sahabi loses his eyesight and he never sees again. 
The last thing he sees is the Waddu Hajj era of Rasul Akram Salah. And then the state that Sayyidina Umar Farooq is in, everyone knows. Yes. He begins to wave his sword frantically and he says that anyone who says that Muhammad Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is dead, he will be dead. He will be dead. The only pillar of strength during this difficult time was who? Sayyidina Abu Bakr Siddiq Yes. This is why he is Afdal al Bashar Ba'dal Anbiya bit Tahkik. For Baqaida preparations take place. Sahaba Ikaram. Salatul Janaza, first the men, then the women, then the children. Yes. The sacred grave is dug and Nablistatu Salama rested into their final resting place. Yes. And this finishes the seerah of the Messenger of Allah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. From beginning to end, uh, over the last seven months, just over 10 hours I'm thinking of video material which has most of it has been uploaded and this will be uploaded as well and those who have been here pretty much every session Allah give you ajr and jaza and those of you who had intentions but because of commitments you've not been able to in, in, attend Allah give you ajr and jaza as well those who have facilitated this class those who have made it possible those who have uh, financially supported this uh, monthly lecture series Allah give them ajr and jaza as well. Fit the arrange the dunya and the akhirah. Yes. We will make a short dua. Just before we make dua, is there anyone who has any question regarding the seerah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? Yes. 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 Left much questions to ask. Make dua for me that Allah keeps me sincere and Allah keeps me steadfast, inshallah. And Allah Almighty allows us to live in the love of the Messenger of Allah and in honoring the Prophet and upholding the namus and the izzat of Nabi Islam. And Allah Almighty allows us to die upon this muhabbat and ishqir Rasul.